if you never try, you never know you are Warren Buffett. Bunti has very deep pockets. Like, it's so deep. Welcome back to another episode of the Backholder Pod. So today, we have a rather interesting topic that um, started out because Eric was the one that actually asked the question in our group. Oh, how would you invest your first $100,000? So I think I'll just open the question to the floor. Um, maybe particularly so, Bunti has previously shown that he owns um, a lot of high-performing stocks, right? Maybe we'll just ask Bunti to first start off the entire discussion. If you had to restart today, how would you invest your first $100,000? Yeah, I think for those who are asking these questions, right, I, I, I'm thinking like someone is not like, you know, 40 years old. It could be someone that is like still very young, still student, 20 years old, and just thinking about starting out, right? So I, I'm thinking from that perspective. Huh? So, so I think uh, if given all this experience that I have, over let's say like past 10 years right i would say instead of like going into all these different individual stocks right i'll just do it like using uh, index funds uh. i think that that's the the way to do it and and the reason is not to say that oh you should forget about like try to outperforming the market it isn't that that it's just like to set the mindset right from the start right because for those who are very active in choosing stocks right they go in and out they talk about stock tips that kind of like mindset but the one that actually uh, will set the right mindset to me, right, is that you should go into index fund and just buy, like, like do a DCA, let's say, like, every month, 1,000, 1,000. Just want to build that first, first uh, base first. And then, of course, throughout that period, you can always, you know, like, branch out to do other things. But you don't, don't forget about the core of the portfolio, which is, like, something that's diversified. Uh, if I can, I'll just comment first, right? Uh, actually, I'm in direct opposition with Bunti's perspective. I think when you're younger, particularly so, because we always talk about this goal, right, where a lot of people are trying to aim for 100,000 before 30 years so, or at least by 30 years so you have 100,000. So that's the kind of um, target profile that I'm talking about. Probably in late 20s or early 30s, you have your 100K. When you hit 100K, it means that you have proven to yourself that whether you save it through your income, you invest it, you get dividends, whatnot, you have proven to yourself that you have hit that first milestone. Um, why I say I'm in direct opposition with Bunti is probably cannot resist the idea of trying to be smarter than everyone. I think we all go through that phase. That's my assumption that everybody will go through that phase. I'd rather you do it earlier than do it later. Meaning I'd rather you take take that experience, you go through that whole thing when you have 100,000 compared to you have 1 million and like 50 plus and then you say that I want to stop big, I want to start trying to beat the market. Um, I'm, I'm worried that my retirement is not well-funded. Because through that experience, you'll be humbled by the market, you'll be humbled by yourself. And then when you're younger, technically, um, your risk profile should be higher because you have lesser obligations. You haven't started a family, you don't have a kid. Um, rather than taking on that perspective much later in life. To be honest, a lot of the good things in life, right? You probably want to try it. You, you, if you don't try it, you always have that harboring thoughts that, oh, what if this, what if that, what if I, what if I'm the next Buffett and things like that. I know there's a lot of discussions about uh, why why are you picking individual stocks? You think who, who you are, you think you're the Charlie Munger of, of Singapore or something like that. Sometimes a lot of things, right? Um, It's not so much about the results. You need to make peace with the idea that, okay, I'm not as good. Um, I'm humbled and um, that's why I go back to the safe, safer of investing. If you really legitimately have the interest in trying to understand businesses, trying to construct your own portfolio, I think no harm giving it a go and look at how Bunti has turned out. He gave advice, but he himself have been picking quite a lot of very well-performing stocks. And yeah, that's, that's basically my perspective. Okay, if I have to restart at this point in time, right? Uh, I think majority of it will be in my bank account savings account start la, knowing what i know now uh of course i actually i also don't really agree with the part that uh if you start off now when you're young late 20s early 30s and then you just uh, try to stock pick prove that you're charlie munger of singapore i think the truth is right for some people it persists throughout their adult life all the way when they're old they still think that they can beat the market it's not as if the market humble you, right? Then you confirm you'll be humble and you become a wise sage. But I've seen so many people, like uh, myself included, uh, the market humble you, yeah, and they say, yeah, the market is wrong. One, uh. The market will come round. I'm right, the market is wrong. Everyone thinks that, like at different points in their life. They, sometimes when you're older, you still think like that. You say, oh, yeah, I've seen all this before. La. Yeah, so I don't want to mention names, but there are so many people who thinks like that. The market is wrong, regardless of we start early or start late. I think it's a it's a character thing, it's a personality thing. Market can humble you, humble you, humble you, and then you're like, give me some more of that humble pie. <laughs>
Uh, okay, so for me, right, coming back to the question, how would I uh, invest it, right? I will put it in my savings account to earn that 5%, of course, uh, from the UOB one account. Then after that, right, I will be waiting for an opportunity. Of course, from this point onwards, right, you need a mentor, lah, someone who has like experience and who is like you look up to them, like they successfully uh, invested when there is crisis. They really leave the buy when there is fear on the street. Ah, so those people who have that track record, you ask them, hey, uh, can you give me a shout out? And then uh, when it really happens. So meanwhile, I think the most uh, critical thing, uh, Chicken will know, right? I say the most important stock that you can invest is in yourself. Yeah, so keep that wall chest, invest in yourself, you know, buy some causes, uh, listen to free free things on YouTube and whatnot, uh, do your own thinking. I think uh, as you grow, right, as you mature, learn your lessons oh, from the market. But I think a uh, very crucial thing is at late 20s to early 30s, that's when people are getting married or at least like they are more involved with having a girlfriend or boyfriend and their expenses start to go up. So their BTO comes in, they have to do renovation, things like that. So that 100K that you save up maybe might not be all used for investing anyway. I mean, that's coming from a 40 plus year old man. Uh. <laughs> if I had to start over at late 20s, that's what I I probably will do. Uh, so for Chiking, he mentioned that you should make mistakes as early as you can. I, that, that was actually what I said during the Sidley talk. If you never try, you never know you are Warren Buffett. But I realized that this thing is uh is like a double H thing. If you succeed, oh, then you will do well. But the chances of you succeeding is actually quite low. I think I saw some stats that like 80% or something, very high percent, about 80 to 90% of traders fail. Even for large institutional fund investors, 90% of them will fail. So this this advice will actually more or less guarantee that you will not make it. Uh, so I think I have to just start from, from basics. So I would just imagine this is the advice that I will give my kids in the future. Start from basics. Uh, do it a bit like what Mr. Lu, where you layer your investments. So you start for if you are in Singapore, you start with the safest ones, which is the Singapore Singapore CPF, which can guarantee you a 4% income. Uh, or, if, or if you are from Malaysia, you go with the EPF, which I think right now is about 7 to 8%. So once you have this base, your retirement is more or less guaranteed. Like, assuming whoever takes power in the future doesn't mess up your <laughs> retirement plan. Uh, then the second second level is the index funds, right? what you guys all say. <clears throat> but for index funds, you can actually do a strategy for it also. It, and it's not just like buy S&P 500, like what Warren Buffett say, right? Kind of thing. If you want to localize it, you can do it. There's a three fund portfolio strategy where you buy like S&P 500, buy like <clears throat> VWRA, which is you, you buy the entire world of index funds. Uh, these two is more or less enough to give you a good base for investment. Uh. Then on the next level, if you want to try to be Warren Buffett, try, try to be Charlie Ma ask Charlie Munger stocks, stock picks, this kind of thing. But it has to be a, like what Eric said, it has to be, to be a very small percentage of your portfolio. To do well in stock picking, uh, you have to spend a lot of time on it. La. So you, you see like uh Bunti, right? Every time I see him giving some pre presentation of like Tesla, Nvidia, this kind of thing, right? He pulls out his entire uh the Google sheet. He has done his whole analysis on this. And I, I would imagine the time that he spent on it is not, it's not little. La. But so that's that's the amount of work that you have to put in. If you can have that time, then do it. La. Otherwise, go towards the next thing instead. Just skip, stop picking entirely. Just go towards like working on yourself, like what Eric say. Uh, like for example, if you think like you go for a degree, a 40k course, computing course can easily give you 4k monthly income you easily pay back within i don't know within a year you that 40k you pay back and the rest is all pure profits already uh same for like editing costs you learn how to become a video editor then you just work on like five projects you have, you have made back all your costs i would prefer instead of uh spending all that time to research stocks which may not pay off it's much better to invest in yourself which has a almost 100% guaranteed return. I just wanted to add one last point to what Kelvin has said, right? 
uh, a lot of people listening, including myself a few years ago, right? When I hear people saying that, talk about self, self-improvement and all that, right? In my mind, I will mentally brush them off. Like, improve myself for what? I, I'm good already as it is. So I just make my money work hard for me. So the idea about your money working hard for you, right? This this idea, right? I think I got to kind of uh, remind people, right? Your money can only work as hard as you do. You cannot make your money work harder than you do. So your 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 capacity, right? How good you are determines how hard your money works for you. If you are at this low level, right? And you dream of passive income, right? It's not going to happen because you won't know how to deploy that money. Likewise, if you are like at a very high level, you know how to deploy that money to good stocks that makes a very good passive income or good business opportunity, then your money will work hard because you did the hard work. But picking S&P 500 don't seem like hard work, right? Like it's basically just one counter and you just deploy everything you have. I mean, based on the conventional wisdom. Lah. No, lah, that one is like a, you want a market return, then it's fine. But for people who think that, oh, uh, I want to like uh, have some sort of a passive income, 6-7%, and then every year can grow one, you know, uh, my money have to work hard for me. You're going to find out that there's, there's not going to be any investment that you can make at your current level, you know, if you don't improve yourself, there's, you can't find any good opportunities. But for people who, who have that knowledge, who have the network, they can find easily, right, like a few beggar kind of uh, returns for their money. Nowadays, they say that, oh, I want to make my money work hard for me. You know, you, you put in 10K, you know, you can get like 200K returns over like three years or what. It's a recipe for disaster. La. But what if I, I like take the shortcut way? Like, let's say I see Bunti, right? He, he's doing so well. Can I just follow his portfolio? Write on his hard work instead. Actually, we, we went through that uh, even last time in the Tesla group also, right? You can follow someone uh, but you cannot follow their circumstances. Bunti has very deep pockets. Like, he's so deep. Uh, you sure you have as as deep a pocket as him? I think, uh, I don't know, la, if you are very that confident and that he will share every single one of his strategies with you, including the rest of his portfolio, including his uh, financial know-how, including his conviction. Put it, put it simply, you're not Bunti, la. You cannot follow 100% what he does. Speaking of like, you know, all these stock picks, how, like just now Eric also mentioned uh, finding opportunities to X your money, right? So so I, I want to circle back to uh, my initial comment about like picking stocks, right? So actually, I, I'm not that against, you know, against picking stocks. I myself also pick stocks, right? So that, that's not the key point. I think the key point is to about the mindset. So i just give you some, some extra background. Uh. Um, I started work in 2009. And then if you ask me to recall what have I been doing from, let's say, 2009 when I started earning my first salary until, let's say, 2017, right? Actually, I find it hard to recall. Like, like you know, the, the type of activities that I did back then is like, oh, buy here, sell there, buy here, sell there. And then I think the last time, right, the old brokers, they don't have all these statements. They don't provide. They have the statements of transactions, but they didn't provide you, like, since uh, your account created, what is your all the list of your transaction? I, I don't know how to pull that out, like those old type of uh, brokerage. Uh. It's only until I, I started using like you know the newer brokers, and then we see that there's all this track record, right? And then from there only started to say, okay, the goal now is not to make like you know, buy 10,000, sell 12,000, earn 2k, earn 3k here, lose 1k here. The goal is not there. The goal is to, regardless of my returns, whether it's like uh 5%, 10%, or is it like negative 5%. But the portfolio have to grow, you know, like the target is like 100K or, or 1 million, right? It has to grow. So how to grow that? I think it's, it's like we, we need to change the mindset a bit. Now. And, and being invested in the stock index or, or index fund or S&P 500 or whatever, right? I think it, it shifts the focus from like paying attention to, you know, like all these tips, like single companies and just focus on the overall portfolio. Because now you remove those noise away and just focus on building, right? And and when you look at, when you invest in something like, let's, for example, S&P 500, like, the volatility also a, a bit lower like compared to individual stocks. 
and you don't pay too much attention to volatility anymore because they are stable compared to your individual stocks. So you just focus on putting money into a portfolio and, and see it compounds. Uh. I think that's, that's the, the more important one. Just a last caveat from me. I think my perspective was for, especially for people that are interested, that wants to learn more about um, how businesses run, different business models, want to be in the nose of financial markets, etc. To be very, very honest, if you are not at all interested, then don't touch it. I think to some people, um, they do it as a passion or they do it as something that they enjoy. Um, truth be told, you look at them, they all tell you to buy index funds, but they all stock pick. Actually, not even for Buffer. I think for many people, um, we all know what the right answer is. We are all still committing our own vices. So I, I guess at the end of the day, you probably have to make peace with yourself on what you want to achieve. You need to know what your goals are, what your objectives are, and you just manage accordingly from there. Of course, we, we are not dishing out financial advice here. It's better to work with someone that's in the industry or that's professional. But um, at the end of the day, we answering it to ourselves and we are taking responsibilities for our own actions. I think that's generally it. If not, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.